when we did our video on the modular engine family, we stopped at the Coyote because like I said, the Coyote deserves its own video. So what is the Coyote engine? Well, the Coyote showed up in 2011 under the hood of the Mustang GT. Mustang enthusiasts were thrilled to see that 5.0 badge return to the Mustang's fender, but were more thrilled with 412 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque, which was way more than the outgoing three-valve engine. Now, while the competition from Mopar and Chevrolet were still using cam and block designs with larger displacements, the Coyote was a high-tech motor with dual overhead cam, 32-valve design. It also had twin independent variable cam timing. Now, what is that? That allows the computer to adjust the advance and retard of both the intake and exhaust cams. This, along with the flow of the heads, allowed the Coyote to be a smaller displacement, but make more power and be also very efficient and very good gas mileage. So a question that often comes up is, is the Coyote considered to be a mod motor? So when Ford built the Coyote, they built it to be the same physical size as the outgoing modular engines. That way they could use a lot of the original tooling. So by that definition, it is considered a mod motor. The argument some have though, is the outgoing mod motors came in different displacements and fit a variety of different vehicles, while a Coyote only comes in one displacement and just fits the Mustang and F-150 with a few small changes. So by that definition, is it a mod motor? Well, it's tough to say, but again, it uses the modular tooling and all the mod motor parts for the most part are interchangeable. So in that case, we're gonna call it a mod motor. So far, there's been three generations of the Coyote engine. The first generation was run from 2011 through 2014. For 2011 and 2012, they made 412 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. And then for 2013 through 2014, they made 420 horsepower and the same 390 pound-feet of torque due to some changes in the piston and some changes in the engine calibration. Now, these motors featured a 92.2 millimeter bore and a 92.7 millimeter stroke, which worked out to 302 cubic inches, just like the old pushrod motor. Now, we all know that's a little bit shy of 5.0, but 4.95 would look stupid on the fender, so they went with a 5 liter name. Now, again, these motors had 11 to 1 compression, which a lot of hot rodders said, no way, that's a ton of compression compared to the old school design but the efficiency of the Coyote made it work with that compression, which allowed it to make great power naturally aspirated and even more power with boost. 2015 brought an entirely new Mustang GT and it also brought a generation two Coyote engine now making 435 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque, thanks to a lot of parts from the outgoing Boss 302 engine. The heads on the Gen 2 Coyote were similar to the ones found on the Boss, featured larger intake and exhaust valves and also higher lift camshaft. Add to this a new intake manifold with charge motion plates, which basically would close at low RPM and open up at higher RPM, which provided better idle, better gas mileage, and higher flow. They also had the forged crank from the Boss 302, making the Gen 2 engine much stronger and more desirable than the Gen 1 engine, and again, very popular with Coyote swaps. 2018 brought a refresh for the front of the Mustang GT along with a brand new Gen 3 Coyote engine, now making 460 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. One of the reasons for those changes that improved horsepower was the new plasma transfer wire arc cylinder liners taken from the GT350. This allowed for a true 93 millimeter bore, so finally the 5 liter Coyote was actually 5 liters of displacement. The cylinder heads again got larger valves, the camshafts got a bump, but the big news was the port injection was joined by direct injection. This allowed compression to be bumped to 12 to 1. The actual usable power band to jump from 7,000 to 7,500 and made for a far more efficient engine that makes a lot more power, especially when you add a power adder to it. On top of that, a new composite oil pan now holds 10 quarts of oil to keep everything lubed safely, making the Gen 3 the best Coyote engine yet. The Coyote engine has already become legendary. I mean, these motors make great power stock. A few bolt-ons, they make even more. And again, you add boost and it's game over for a lot of the competition. So much so, a lot of Coyote racers have actually seen weight penalties and even been banned from certain races, which shows even the competition realizes how amazing the Coyote engine really is.